uh, the teamless player right now, actually. It is Vibe. Living right in my state of beautiful uh, sunny Colorado, and uh, hopefully he'll have his best of luck versus his opponent at the top right side of the map. Representing No Dice Gaming, it is Cham. Both these uh, both these players are GM caliber players, without a doubt in my mind. Uh, ZBZ, of course, uh, going to be happening on this map. And uh, after watching a lot of ZBZs today and casting a lot of them earlier in the EU qualifiers, it's going to be very interesting to see what we can find out uh, about both of these players. How do they like to play? And at the moment, there we go. I was about to say, we got the first action from Vibe. We do get that pull down, so uh, at this point... Cham sp uh, spots out, scouts out. Not always uh, one of those things we usually see every day with that drone scout, but uh, due to that drone scout and seeing that 15 pool, that does open up him the option to safely grab that 15 hatch. So, Vibe, of course, uh, former Mr. WCS America. Uh, very good Zerg player, has a very strong ZBZ in my opinion, uh, even though he's not really... <laughs> He wasn't really too confident in himself uh, last time I talked to him about his EVZ up, a bit, uh, up at MLG Anaheim. But, um, you know, I still believe in him, and I think he still got it. So, today already, let's take a look and see how uh, these two players have fared. And I need to pop that bracket up just a little bit higher. It is okay. So, uh, today, Cham has be beaten Ranged and has beaten Elheim. Uh, meanwhile, Vibe, he had a first round bye, and he was able to beat Grav Trace in the second round. Uh, and again, this is the round of 32 if you guys are just tuning in right now. So, uh, as we take a look and see, uh, there is that pool happening uh, on a map like this. You know, you can see a wide variety of play. Nothing really is off limits uh, for players. It's, I would say, probably one of the more direct pass to your opponent's two-player map, so it's a little bit easier to play your builds around. But, you know, you gotta be very cautious as well. Because of the two-player map, you gotta be very wary that uh, you might be prepared for countered in as well, so we'll see what happens. Already one ling does, uh, I'm sorry, not one ling, one drone falls. Good snipe right there from Vibe. And again, all really it does with having that pool first, it makes you, puts you in a little bit of a safer position, allows you to get your queens out earlier. Your hatch will come out a little bit later, but hey, I mean, some people like having the queens out for defense. They feel a little bit more safer and comfortable. They're able to inject a little bit sooner as well, so um, they never fall too far behind, or really ever, for the most part. Now Vibe uh, mining two, one on gas just to get enough for speed, and I'm going to assume he's going to pull that one off eventually. Nah, I'm going to stick to it for now, just going to get a little bit of extra with it. But can of course get the speed upgrade if he does want to right now. Vibe uh, instead deciding that he wants to grab a third hatch, very risky move right here, and does Cham see this? He does indeed. Has the Overlord spotted right nearby. And. <laughs> His reaction to this is to drop Evo Chambers and Roach Warren. Very interesting decision. Right now, uh, if I was Cham, I might think about sending a lot of links across the map to see if I can potentially deny this third base from ever coming up. Uh, one of the things you don't want to let your opponent do is allow have to, basically allow them that extra larva, that extra production potential. Um, through these early stages and you see he's not going to be too far behind in his roach production either because he does have that roach war and uh, getting built underway right now as well part of his wall so vibe gonna try to take a little bit of a lead in the macro game and again it's one of those things where if in fact cham does sit back he again hasn't taken his third base or has no plans of it just yet um, it could get really dangerous for him because vibe is a pretty strong macro player so we'll see Hatch just about finished up. Plus one missile, plus one carapace for a vibe underway. Uh, Cham getting speed for his speedling, so who knows? We could have just a huge influx of units heading across the map. Now the weird thing in between this is usually you do want a little bit of a cutoff line uh, when you're playing like this, and if you are going to go for a big aggression, this is that point in time where you might think about actually, <laughs> you know, stopping making the drones and go into full-out unit production. 
Meanwhile, for Vibe, we do have some roaches in the production tab. Meanwhile, he's still continuing his worker production. Of course, uh, when you have three hatches, you have a lot of saturation that you have to cover, or at least you're interested to cover. And there we go. That's what I'm talking about from Cham right now. Hitting that production tab, hitting that... Uh, <laughs> Hitting that Z button hard. We do. We have a lot of links underway. 22 plus the ones that were hidden already. Uh, half of them across the map. Speed upgrade just about done. Looks like Vibe has just noticed this. Continues his roach production. But man, at this point, with this amount of roaches out on the map, I feel like they are going to be completely outclassed and out of position. And, you know, just not in the best place, uh, I would have to say. Plus one, plus one, still not done for those units of vibe. So now he's got to fight with his uh, drones, unfortunately, at this point. Roach is trying to do the best they can, but they're coming out in very significant, uh, very small numbers right now, trying to do the best that they possibly can. And uh, unfortunately, just they're getting completely surrounded, losing their life way before they're even able to say anything about it. And now, uh, hopefully, trying to get in within the natural, but there is a queen there to block them off. So you know what? I think right now they're going to, or at least not they're going to, Cham's going to probably settle with the third hatch. Not too bad of a trade for him. If you can, of course, get it. But the most important factor is here is you got to count how many Roaches have already been killed off right now by Cham. And uh, unfortunately, because he's stuck around battling ar uh, around all of these units for a little bit too long, he's going to get pushed off. This is going to get by time for Vibe to recover and uh, actually head across the map with his own Roaches. But you could already see Cham with his production getting the defenses ready back at home. Third hatch just about up for himself. Speedlings come on back in here and oh, these these drones are like, no, no, you guys left us for dead. Get back here, you damn roaches. And uh, yeah, that's kind of unfortunate for them. Well, I mean, both players, I would have to say, are pretty close to even. You take a look at the work count, you take a look at the supply counts. I mean, not, not too much disparity right now uh, that you can notice. Uh, we see that plus two carapace is underway for Cham. Plus to attack uh, underway for Vibe, plus his speed. So, you know, it, it's mirroring out very nicely. It's going to pan out, I feel like, to be a very nice deep long game. Now, Vibe, very interesting, he does have this uh, third Evo chamber, and I hope more for the sake of walling off than anything else. I missed when he actually put it down because it really doesn't make too much sense to ever have a third Evo chamber, but for uh, walling purposes, it definitely does. And I mean, with that huge of an influx of lings, you want to make sure that they have no way of getting. Uh no way of getting. Huh, no way of getting in. Okay. I have no clue what that was about. Absolutely no clue what that was about. Ling, Ling's running on in here. They're going to die, of course. Uh, this takes away a little bit of the threat on this side of the map. Again, a few Ling's are not going to be able to end the game, but you definitely want to try to deny those run buys as best you possibly can. Whoops. Well, as we continue, the Roach numbers uh, continue to stockpile. Both players trying to finish up their plus two upgrades. We can see that pl uh, the plus carapace is pretty even. The missile tax is actually really even as well. Um, I mean, you put a mirror, you put a you put a mirror, and I mean across the middle of this map, and it's pretty damn symmetrical. I would have to say. Only thing that's missing is maybe a little bit more overlords uh, from Cham and maybe some creep from Vi, but. In terms of production, in terms of unit counts, you got to give it up. You got to give it to both players. They're doing a pretty damn good job. Now, this is also due a little bit to vibe having that third base up a little bit earlier, and having that capability to actually produce all of these units. I do apologize if I yawn. <laughs> yawn a couple times. I've uh, been up for way too many hours today. Um, not because I'm bored. These games are awesome, and I actually really like ZBZ. Just. After you're, after you've done broadcasting and you've been up for over uh, about 16, 17 hours, you get, you get a little tired. You get a little tired. All right, so here we go. Roach versus Roach. Looks like uh, gets the first uh, shot from Cham, but Vibe is going to try to work his way in here. Slightly better concave right now for Cham, and uh, we'll see what upgrades. Both upgrades have kicked in, so it's plus two versus plus two. Uh, can Vibe make his way through right now? He has dipped into supply, 128 to 161. Defender's advantage, I feel like, is going to give the chance to just break through here for Cham. And 
Good work right there. He could have taken the engagement right here, but instead he decides to take the engagement behind his base, allowing him to get a better concave on the funneled units here. It's not much of a funnel, but, you know, every little bit counts. You watch as Vibe had about three rows of roaches there, and some of those ones in the back weren't able to do much. So, good engagement from Cham, but, you know, that doesn't exactly seal Vibe's fate. Vibe still has a lot of fight in him. He's producing more and more roaches back at home. Uh, actually, 14 already in production. Now, the one scary part about this is if he is not cautious about his progression in this game, he could maybe falter because you take a look at Cham right now and he is starting to add Hydras. He's getting that plus range and uh, Hydras have wonderful DPS and the Roach, sli Ro Roach, ver Roach versus Roach kind of Roach Hydra versus Roach Hydra matchup. If you can have a few of those, a good line of them alive behind everything else, and they just start sniping and pot shotting those roaches little by little of your opponent, it's going to work really well. It's going to work out well, or it should work out well in concept. I do find it a little bit ironic that neither player has actually attempted to take their fourth base just yet. I feel like at some point you really want to do that. Well, Vibe's going to head home for the time being. He sends a little bit of a burrowed roach pack over to the top left location. No base there for him to uh, pick at. Might try to slither his way within the third base. There is an overseer, so he does spot this. And uh, Meanwhile, in the middle of the map, we have a little bit of a chase going on. Cham chasing Vibe down into his third base. Uh, we, these roaches, though, will force the mineral line and gas uh, drones to get pulled off. He's going to start head hunting over towards that. Spine crawler, and here we go. Big engagement gonna happen here. Vibe trying to set up a really nice flank. Uh, does he have enough forces at home? I want to say no right now. He's getting completely overwhelmed now. Roach is in the backside flanking, and they're getting the better engagement of that split of the army. But you can just see how forceful this army is right now from Cham. But Cham does have to be careful right here. He, depending on how much he loses here, uh, it could be really dangerous for him. And uh, Spine Crawler is going to be the next one to go. We look back at the fight over by the third base, and all the roaches, all the units of Vibe are going down. I think it's a victory for Cham. Um, even though over here there's so much damage that happened, and he's going to lose a lot of these workers, this is one of those moments where uh, I don't think Vibe can really come back. It's very tough to pull off. He doesn't have DPS, really, with the Hydras of his own. He doesn't have, uh, of course, high, uh, I'm sorry, he doesn't have Infestors, he doesn't have Ultras, he doesn't have really anything that can contribute to side of Roaches, so after losing that fourth and third hatch, uh, really it's checkmate for the most part. Now Vibe, of course, trying to split his opponent apart all over the place, uh, sending some Roaches within the main, of course, big army chasing that down as well. Meanwhile, over here, another one running through the natural, maybe even over to third base once again. And, uh... He could keep doing this all he wants, but eventually what's going to happen is Cham is either going to produce and remax, which he basically has right now. There we go, 200 out of 200, or he's just going to go for a counterattack. Like, and he just fight, fends off this and just goes for a counterattack. There's just not enough production, not enough econ. I wouldn't be surprised if Vibe just uh, tapped out and took a GG here pretty damn soon. Like, Vibe, Vibe is a really smart player, so I see him as being uh, one of those comp competent players and kind of knows when he's defeated. And again, this isn't one of those. This isn't the game that his life is on the line. Even though, yes, you do want to fight to the end, this isn't the game that's on the line. This is just one of the three. One of the potential three. For Cham, Roach is in the middle of the map. We do have Hydralisks there as well, slither slithering away. Controlling the center of the map now with Hydras, he's going to be able to clear out some of the overlords, which might cause even some more problems than already uh, Vibe has already had. And uh, as soon as I mean, Vibe, Vibe has got to see this army and be like, "Man, that is way too much for me to handle. How am I going to deal with that?" Well, he's going to attempt to in some form or shape, but here comes uh, all of these units funneling inside the natural of Vibes. Canceling all of the spine crawlers and uh, <laughs> allowing Anitis to finish. He's got, of course, an overseer on the top right side of the map. Is he going to do it? Yes, he is. Is he going to? The question is, is he going to have enough time? And uh, Vibe's just going into full base race mode. Base race, base trade, base trade TV mode. Bruh.
That's just a disgusting sound. Numerous and numerous amounts of units just funneling in right now, trying to get their way back home and trying to help uh, out their team. But with Roaches funneling through this little concave right here, if uh, Champ's not too careful, I was about to say, I'm like, if he keeps sending uh, them one by one, uh, <laughs> he might lose them all. Ironically, he's actually going to kill his own Evo Chamber just so he could filter his own units on through. Now, Vibe going to move up to the high ground, going to try to use that high ground to his advantage. He has the better funnel, but not until this point where all of these units surround him, and uh, that's going to be game one in the books. Sham takes it.